Grandpapa was never much of a just a farmer. He was more of a scientific farmer. So he started developing a certain type of corn and ended up being called the Jell O' Course 20 Air Seed Corn. Now I remember when I was working on the farm, we, we still sold Jell O' Course 20 Air Seed Corn. And what you'd do, you'd go through the field and you, you would only pick uh, one ear from a stalk, but you'd always find a stalk that had two ears on it, two good ears, and you'd only pick the bottom, the bottom ear. Make sure it was a good, solid ear, and you'd pick that off. Now this is after it dried in, in the fall, and you'd get to have a sack, and you'd get a sack full of that corn, and then you'd take it back to the crib, where, and then you would, uh, of course, shuck it. And then you would nub it, and nubbing means you would take the small grain off of one end, and we nub it off, and then you nub the real big grain off the other end, and that would only leave the real fine grains in the, in the middle, and then you would sh then you would shell you shell it by hand. You wouldn't shell it through a machine because you didn't want to damage the, the corn grains. Then we would sack that. And we'd sell that Jell O' Course 28 seed corn. And it outproduced all other uh, seed corn for years and years until they came out with hybrid seed corn. And it started out producing the Jell O' Course 28 seed corn after a while. One time, Grandpa was there, and then the boys told him there on the farm, said, Mr. Jell O' Course, so we're making tobacco beds. And the tobacco bed is 100 feet long and 9 feet wide. And back then what they would do is they would burn, cover it all with, with brush and logs and everything and then sit it on fire and they'd burn it. And in order for what they were doing there is they were burning all the, the weed seed. And they'd burn it down to just nothing but ash left, you know. And then the poles would be on each side all the way around. And then there was a white canvas real thin white canvas would go on top of it that would keep everything, that would protect it from the early spring uh, freezes that you might have or, or protect it from a seed, a weed seed growing into it. But what you would do is when you get all that burn, then you would take a, a, a big heaping spoon of, of seed and you'd take about a, a, a three or four gallon uh, bucket of, of uh, ashes and you mix all that, you mix all that together, mix all that together. And then you would just take that, that would just that one spoonful of seed, and then you take that, those ashes, and you would sow them, and that would cover the whole nine by hundred foot bed from one end to the other. That's all it would take. So the boys came to Grandpa and said, Mr. Jell of course said, we need some tobacco seed. So he said, oh well, so I'll get on my old horse and and I'll ride over to Elmwood and get you some tobacco seed. So he rode over to Elmwood and he went in McKinney's store and said, oh, Mr. Jell, of course, what can we do for you? He said, well, I, the boys need some tobacco seed. He had no earthly idea or anything about tobacco. He said, well, how much do you need, need Mr. Jell, of course? He said, I guess a peck would be a plenty. Well, a peck is a, supposedly about a half a bushel and a peck of tobacco seed would have sown every tobacco bed in Smith County. Uh, he, he had no earthly idea what it was. And Daddy always said the only money that Grandpapa ever made on the farm was when he sold a piece of property.